2000 through 2006 Lexus LS430 starter replacement. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of changing out the starter. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you the parts that you're going to need to do this job. You're going to need some gaskets, and you're also going to need the starter. I will link up all these parts in the description of the video. So the starter on this LS430 is underneath the intake manifolds. So that's the reason for the gaskets. We're going to get started by taking the top engine cover off. We're going to remove the two 10 millimeter bolts here and here. And once you get those removed, you can just lift the cover straight up and off, and now you can set this aside. So now we're going to get started removing the intake manifold. The first thing we're going to do here is get rid of the air snorkel here. So we're going to unbolt it here and we're going to follow it around and we're going to unbolt it over here at the uh, air box. And then there's going to be a couple of vacuum lines and uh, vent lines we're going to pull off. And so they're going to be on the side of the box on the back back here and you're going to pull all these off. Then if you look straight down here, there's supposed to be a 10 millimeter bolt here. This vehicle has it missing. Go ahead and remove that bolt. Once you get that removed and all the vent lines removed, you can go ahead and pull the air snorkel off. Then you can just set it aside on your bench. Now we're gonna unbolt the throttle body here, but we're not gonna unplug the electrical connectors or take off the, uh, the coolant hoses going to the throttle body. We're gonna leave those all connected. We're just gonna remove the nuts here on the top and then the bolts on the bottom. And then we're gonna slide it off and set it right here in the front leaving everything connected. The only thing you need to disconnect is the vent line right here for the PCV breather here. So you can go ahead and pull this off. Now you can just rotate this out of your way. So once you get it unbolted, you're just gonna take the throttle body like this and slide it back until it's off the uh, little studs here. And you're just gonna leave it here, leaving everything connected to it. You can also use a bungee cord and hook it up to it and then pull it back and hook it onto the grill here on the front. And that'll hold it out of your way when we take the intake off. So the heater hoses are mounted on top of the manifold. We need to take the 10 millimeter bolt here, here, and then there's gonna be one back here. We're gonna remove all these 10 millimeter bolts and that'll free the uh, hoses from the manifold. We're not gonna disconnect them. We're just gonna uh, lo loosen them up like this. And then once you get these all unbolted, we're gonna take the vacuum hose off here, pull that off, set that aside. And then we're gonna follow this uh, vent line right here. We're gonna take this vacuum line off and push it off to the side. So I fed a bungee cord underneath the hoses and uh, wrapped it around and tied it up against the uh, windshield wiper motor here. That gives us plenty of access to get back here to the bolts. So now on the passenger side here, we're gonna unplug the fuel injectors and uh, all the electrical connectors, including the, the cam sensor. So you're just gonna follow along and unplug all these connectors here. So I just worked from the back of the intake all the way forward to the very front, unplugging everything you also find that the wire looms are bolted to the fuel rails. You can go ahead and remove the 10 millimeter bolts and then push the wiring off to your side. So once you get the wire loom pushed off to the side, one of the hardest connectors to get unplugged is the uh, cam sensor here. You can use a flat blade screwdriver here and kind of put it right here and kind of give it a twist. And that will sometimes will push the tab and then you can pull it off. And if that doesn't work, what you could do is take a hook tool like this and go around the back side of the uh, fuel rail here and push onto the tab and then you can pull the connector off. So once you get that unplugged, now you can just start pulling the wiring harness back towards the uh, the outside of the engine. And then in this case, the vent line was in my way, so I pulled it off and now I can pull the wiring loom back a little further and get myself a little bit more room. So now on the driver's side, we're gonna start removing the hard plastic uh, wire loom mounts. There's a couple uh, 10 millimeter bolts that are holding it down. You'll just follow these around and unbolt those. And then you're gonna start unplugging all the electrical connectors here. The same thing you did the opposite side. And uh, just create slack in the wiring harness, unbolting anything and unplugging anything that's uh, preventing the wiring harness and loom from being slack enough. So once you get it, there's also going to be a, a hidden 10 millimeter bolt for the uh, wire loom holder right here in the middle of the intake right here. So go ahead and remove that and then that'll give you a little bit more slack. Now you can get to the injectors and unplug all the injectors and any electrical connector. I even pulled the vent line off here um, in the front to uh, help me get access to the uh, fuel injector here. So squeeze the tabs and pull those all off. Right here is the EVAP vent line. You want to squeeze the tab and pull this hose off and swing it out of your way. To get a, more, a little bit more slack, I went ahead and took off the bracket right here. Uh, this is one 10, 10 millimeter bolt holding it on, and you can just wiggle it out and pull it aside. To get to the cam sensor on this side, I also used the, uh, the hook tool again and reached around the back behind the fuel rail right here. So you can reach around behind the fuel rail and push the little electrical connector tab and then pull the connector off. 
So I went ahead and uh, unbolted the uh, brackets here with the vacuum switches here and then the uh, bracket here that held the uh, top cover on. So I went ahead and unbolted these with the, uh, they're just held on for a couple of 10 millimeters. I just used my little Milwaukee uh, uh, stubby impact here to remove these fasteners. So once I got the uh, purge valve unbolted right here, you can um, either take the hose off or just leave it on there. It doesn't really matter. And then uh, now you can get a lot more slack in the uh, wiring loom here to get to the rest of the uh, injectors and lift it up and uh, start pushing it off to the side and out of your way. Now that we got the wire loom pretty much free uh, from all its mounts and uh, un all the connectors disconnected, we're going to turn our focus over to the fuel line right here. So we need to unbolt this fuel line. And uh, to do that, I'm just going to use a... Uh, a 14 millimeter line wrench and also a 19 millimeter line wrench and you're going to slide it over the uh the 19 millimeter over the main portion of it like this and the 14 millimeter will go on the opposite side the 14 millimeter side is the one that you're going to spin loose so you're going to loosen it up and you're going to disconnect the line now we're going to uh when we unbolt it we're going to fish the rest of the line underneath this wiring harness here so you want to make sure you memorize how it's routed also on the opposite side here, this little bracket has a wire loom that's held onto it. It's easier to take the wire, the bracket off like this. Just push it off to the side. And uh, now before we unbolt the intake manifold, I use compressed air and I like to blow around the edges of the uh, manifold. This helps prevent dirt and debris falling into the engine when we uh, unbolt it. So now we're going to use a, uh, a 12 millimeter socket and uh, a little extension. We're going to start at the front of the manifold and there's going to be a bolt here and then we're just going to keep moving down. There's going to be a bolt here. So we're going to start at the front of the manifold. We're removing the 12 millimeter bolts. And uh, so we're going to leave the fuel line and everything, everything else all connected. We're just going to start at the front. We're going to remove the bolt here. And you're going to follow it around. And you, if you look straight down, you can see the, the bolt. There's number three. Number four is right here. And then there's going to be a fifth bolt at the very back right here, just behind the fuel rail. And you can see it down there. We're going to remove those five bolts. And then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. The hardest one to get to is the one in the very back back here. Uh, but you can do it with a little extension and you can feed it underneath the, uh, the hoses and everything right here under the firewall. You probably won't be able to use power tools or ratchets back here in the back. But uh, hand tools will work fine. You can flex the hoses and stuff out of your way to get to the, that one last fastener back there. I use a magnet like this, a pencil magnet, to uh, retrieve the nuts and bolts once I... Uh, once I loosen them up, it uh, prevents them from dropping down everywhere. So when you're done with the five on this side, that's what it's going to look like. And then you're going to do the exact same thing for the uh, driver's side here. So you're going to start at the front and just work your way back one at a time. And as you can see, it's the same, pretty much the same setup as the uh, opposite side back there. So the back bolt is kind of difficult to get to or see. So I put the uh, tool back here so you guys can reference where the uh, bolt is at when you go to take it apart. So you're just going to go ahead and remove all the uh, fasteners. If you look underneath the wiring harness at an angle like this, you can see the back bolt back here pretty, pretty clear when you go to take it off. So now the manifold is unbolted. We're going to lift it up off high enough to clear the studs here on the front and rear. And then once we get it lifted up, we're going to pull it forward a little bit. And what we're going to have to do is lift the nose up. Then you'll have to slightly twist the manifold clockwise a little bit where it'll help clear the uh, fuel line from underneath the, uh, the wire loom here. So you're going to lift it up, twist it counterclockwise or clockwise a little bit, and then, and then pull it outwards towards you. So when you go to lift it out, it's best to have a helper lift up on one side while you lift up the other. And then once you lift it up, then you can pull it forward, like I said. And now once you get it pulled forward... Uh, like this now what you can do is twist it clockwise like I said and now we're going to pull that fuel line out from underneath the wire loom here now you can lift the manifold out and set aside on your bench once you get the manifold out there's going to be some vacuum lines and uh, 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 stuff underneath here you want to make sure that this is all in good shape that no rodents or anything has chewed any of this up if any of this is in bad shape I recommend you uh, fix that or replace that now so once you get the intake off, in the valley here, it's pretty common to be stuff with debris and stuff. I use a shop vac like this to suck out as much dirt and debris as I can. I also take a close look in the intake ports here and make sure that nothing fell down inside there. And if they did, go ahead and retrieve that. If you look here, I'm looking at the knock sensors here. Uh, this wiring is prone to being chewed up by rodents and stuff, so you want to make sure that that's all in good shape. Now you can go ahead and pull the old gaskets off and set this aside. 
I definitely recommend replacing with new gaskets. They will be linked in the description of the video. Before we unbolt the starter, I recommend you un, uh, unbolt the uh, negative battery cable of the uh, battery. And as a precaution, so nothing falls down in the ports, I put rags in the intakes here to prevent any debris from falling down inside here. Now we're going to start unbolting the wire loom here and uh, getting the uh, starter free. So there's a, a 12 millimeter bolt right here that we need to uh, remove. And then right here in the back, we need to remove this 10 millimeter bolt holding the wire loom on. And uh, to, to do that, I just use a, a regular wrench like this and crack the uh, 10 millimeter bolt free. And once you get it cracked free, you can usually take your fingers back here and spin the bolt out like this. Once you get the bolt back here removed, we're going to take the uh, 12 millimeter bolt here in the front here. There's a little cap that's probably going to be on it. Uh, I just popped it off of a screwdriver. It can be super brittle and a very good chance that it's going to break, especially if it's an older vehicle like this. And uh, go ahead and remove the uh, main 12 millimeter. It's actually a nut that's uh, held on right here. So now that you've got the main uh, positive battery cable portion of it uh, disconnected, you can go ahead and pull the wire loom forward like this. And that gives you access to the bolt. You can see it right back there. It's a 14 millimeter bolt right there. And the same on the opposite side there. To get to those two bolts, I use a, um, a flex head ratchet like this. And this one's made by Mountain. They're extra long. They're about 18 inches long. It makes getting to bolts like this really easy with the extra length on there. Uh, it has plenty of leverage. You, now you can make sure that the rest of the electrical connectors are removed. You may want to unplug the knock sensors if they're in your way. Now you can just pull the uh, starter forward and then out like this. So a tip for you guys is to leave the long bolts here in the back inside the uh, back of the block here. Just leave them in there and uh, that'll help you... Uh, uh, reach back here and get them started when you put the new starter in so if you notice when I put the starter in, I put the tail note uh, of it in first like this underneath the wiring harness and then once it's uh, underneath the harness here uh, you want to make sure that you don't uh, bang the uh, the sensors here you can lower the nose down and now you can slide it into position and you reach back here and start the uh, the two bolts I recommend you leave it really loose uh, when you start them both and then you can uh, run them in until they're both snug and tighten these back up. You can't get any torque wrenches or anything like that back there. It's almost impossible. You can reach your hands around back like this to, to help get the uh, bolts started. Um, there's a little bit of room, more room than you may think back here to get these bolts started. Once you get them started, then you can go ahead and tighten them up with the uh, with your ratcheting wrenches. And then you can start the wire loom on the 10 millimeter for the wire loom and put the main connectors on and tighten these all up. Put the caps back on here and uh, all the connectors connected back up. Now we're going to take our gaskets here out of our kit that, that I uh, will link up in the description. And we're going to uh, take the new gaskets and uh, put them on the ports here. You want to make sure that this is all cleaned up and there's no debris on the, uh, on the cylinder heads here before you put the gaskets on. Now you're going to match up your gaskets, slide them onto the, uh, to the ports like this right here on both left and right side. Now you can start feeding the manifold back into position. So you're going to slide the, the uh, tail in first like this, and you're going to uh, route that fuel line underneath the, uh, the wiring harness back there in the back. So as you can see, I got it caught kind of clockwise at an angle, and I'm routing the uh, fuel line underneath it. So if you notice, I'm um, working on the uh, driver's side, making sure the hose and everything is going underneath the wire loom. Once I get that kind of close and into position, then I'll switch over to the opposite side of the manifold. Then I'll double check that there's nothing obstructing the manifold from sliding in, pulling the wiring harness and everything back out of my way. One thing you want to be aware of is the vacuum switch here that goes underneath the manifold. The wiring loom needs to be tucked up here. You don't want it to be stuck in the back or underneath the manifold when you put it in. So when you go to put the manifold back in, it may be getting stuck on the studs or, or, or you may be having wire looms uh, falling in, in the place of... So having a pair, a second pair of hands and also a second pair of eyes is a good thing when you go to drop the uh, manifold back into position. So the hardest part is you got to lift it up over the little studs in the front and the back and drop it down evenly on both the left and the right side. So once you got the manifold back into position, before you bolt anything up, you want to double check that there's nothing pinched underneath. You want to make sure that the gasket didn't fall off or anything. You can lift the manifold up a little bit on the left and right side. Uh, and kind of look under there and you can see. So now we're going to start all the bolts and fasteners. I take a piece of paper and stick it in the bolt and then put the bolt in the uh, 
in the socket like this and that'll hold it into place and make it easy to start all the fasteners. So I recommend you start all 10 of the fasteners by hand before you tighten any of them down. So once you got all the bolts started, we're going to start in a crisscross pattern. We're going to start left, right, left, right, and we're going to tighten up all the fasteners. So we're going to start with one fastener right here in the middle, and we're going to torque this down to 13 foot-pounds. Then we're going to move over to the opposite side and torque it down to 13 foot-pounds. Then we're going to move forward and then left, and then we're going to go towards the back and then over, and then we'll go all the way to the front again, torque these two bolts, and then in the very back, torque those uh, all those bolts. Now that the manifold is on and torque, we can go ahead and take the throttle body and put it on and we're gonna re replace the gasket. I'll link this up in the description and we're gonna put the new gasket on, put this throttle body on, and we're also gonna torque those down to 13 foot-pounds. So we'll torque all four of these bolts in a crisscross pattern like this. So now I'm gonna start on the rear passenger side. I'm gonna take the little bracket that held the wire loom for the vacuum switch that went underneath the manifold and uh, mount that up and then I'm going to start unplugging all the injectors and stuff. I'm starting the very back. Anything that we unplug over here, I'm just going to work my way forward, plugging everything in. Knock sensor, wire loom holders, everything gets plugged back in. So as you can see, I started in the back. I plugged in all the injectors, the bracket right here in the back, the vacuum hose that went across here, um, all this stuff, the wire loom holder, everything here gets plugged back in and just double check. And then uh, we're going to make sure everything is remounted that we took off. All the little brackets, everything on this side. So you can go ahead and start all the little bolts and tighten those all down. You just need to run them down to they're snug. Once that's all secure, I went ahead and also put the uh, rubber vent line here for the PCV back on. Now we're going to go over to the opposite side here. And you can either start at the front here and work your way back. Or you can go from the back here and work your way front, plugging all the uh, electrical connectors in and uh, re-securing the, uh, the wire loom like this, re uh, remount everything. So you can start from the front or the back, D doesn't matter. Once you get all the injectors and uh, cam sensors and everything plugged in, now you can go ahead and start the four 10 millimeter bolts holding the uh, wire loom holder down and go ahead and snug those down and bolt those up. Now you can go ahead and start the little bracket back here and tighten these bolts up. You can remount the purge valve here and then you can put the little bracket that goes underneath the uh, purge valve here. So you want to route it under like that and start that bolt and, and tighten those all up. Now you can install the EVAT vent line that we tucked off to the side right here. Install that and then we can take the, uh, P the PCV valve here hose and go ahead or the breather hose and we can go ahead and start that on the uh, manifold here and then uh, Resecure the uh, the hoses back here for the heater hoses with the uh, three bolts and then the uh, the brake booster hose here You want to uh, put that back on and install that and now we're gonna take the fuel line And we're gonna resecure that and tighten it up with our line wrenches until it's uh, snug You want to make sure that this is not kinked or twisted or any way when you tighten this up now we can go ahead and reinstall the air snorkel here onto the throttle body and mass air and then you make sure all the vent lines and vacuum hoses that went to it are all secured back onto the box. Now we can hook up the battery cable and then we're going to start the vehicle up and we're going to make sure that there's no fuel leaks or anything like that. So go ahead and start the vehicle, test out your starter, make sure that's all working good. And then we're going to come back in the engine bay here and we're just going to start the back and just look, make sure that there's no fuel leaks, no... No vacuum leaks, no, everything is plugged back in and just give it a good look over and make double check our work from the start to finish all the way to the back. Then we can go ahead and install the top engine cover and then re-secure the uh, two fasteners. I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.